Hi, I'm Rob, and in this Gems of War video, I'm going to show you a really cool and no mythic invasion team you can use, as well as a mythic alternative and a way you can swing this team around a little bit when all the towers start appearing. And it's very straightforward to use at the same time, but it is essential to use the event captain in this. The Lady of Ruin has times two magic and earns times two score for this event only, so absolutely essential to get her and use her in the team. And you get her from the shop. Tier 1 and Tier 2 is what you want as absolute essentials for this. Tier 1, you get a Potion of Enchantment and charm all allies at the start of battle for this event only. And you pick up more troops and sigils at the same time. And a Tier 2 is where you get the Lady of Ruin, dealing magic plus 2 damage to an enemy. If they're a tower, deal 3 to 5 times damage based on your ascensions and create 6 purple gems and 6 skulls. Now that spell is important because it does have damage, but it does create six purple gems and six skulls which is not a lot that could actually get you in a bit of bother especially with those skulls we have to take that into consideration with the kind of a team we're going to pick and we'll come to that in a moment a threat is pretty cool too inflict terror when i match skulls and siege breaker deal three to five times skull damage versus towers based on my ascensions usually these sit at the bottom for the entire match um but we're going to move her later on and i'll show when we do that and that's when that third trait will really come in handy. So try and get that if you can. Now, if you want to get her to a mythic level as you should, there's two ways to do it. Either buy to a tier two and go and use two orbs of ascension to get her to a mythic level. That's good if you can spare those orbs. But other than that, you can have to spend a bunch of gems getting enough copies of her to get her to mythic level that way. But at tier three, there is a cool weapon at the same time, dealing magic plus three damage to the first two enemies boosted by mystic allies we're not going to use it for this event but hey it's a new weapon always good to pick it up and you're probably going to want to go to tier 3 anyway to help out your guild completing all the rewards in the event right so let's take a look at this team uh so this is the starting team and i'll show how we move this around a little bit later on and a mythic alternative if you have the troops and you want to have a, a bit of fun with it but um i'm in geomancer for this because this is the safest class for this because the thing is with this let's create skulls the trouble with that is it's like you can start with a root trap class like archer or warden but the trouble is as soon as you kill the first enemy that's gone and it's going to become irrelevant when the towers start appearing because they're invulnerable for me much better to have something like this where we basically get rock solid gain a barrier when matching brown gems that is going to just save you and tree of knowledge is really good as well and there's a bunch more things in this which are candy which will show in a minute and we're going to get brown all the time because first of all we collect it for mystic manuscript and secondly queen bee creates green and brown so we're going to be getting a barrier pretty much non-stop in this which is going to be pretty important later on especially if our lady of ruin tries to mess things up by setting up the enemy with skulls when you cast her so that's why that is important now if you want a bit of a change from this I do pick geomancer class quite a lot but it is an amazing class you can actually go Night Weaver on this if you want. You can have a bit of fun with this. And uh, the reason why this is good is because it's the Mystic class. And as such, has some really nice benefits to Mystic Troops, which is our entire team. Allied Mystics gain two life, gain one magic when an ally casts a spell. And Knight's Blessing give two magic to all Mystic allies when matching purple. Every single time you match purple, you can give two magic to our Queen Bees, for example, which is going to be very, very good indeed. The Talent Trees... Unfortunately, you're nothing too fantastic until you get near the end of this. But you've got stuff like Stealthy, Dodge, and Rising Shadows, which is particularly good. But the reason why that's actually not bad pick is because Queen Beatrice's uh, magic, her spell rather, her spell damage is more than double her magic. So plus two to Queen B actually puts her damage up by four. So an extra four true damage on each Queen B every single time you just collect purple, which you do to charge up Lady of Ruin. So yeah, that is a viable option now this is the starting class for this i'm going for this because i love it impact uh we can have i've got mage lord there in sort of um preparation for later on maybe if you want to stick it into last place because obviously it's nice to have that summon option especially if you're a newer player anti-magic sphere is nice tactician is good rock solid amazing for this tree of knowledge and a fortitude so Let's start with this team. We're going to just get the team up. We're going to cast Mystic Manuscript. Uh, charge the team up because Queen B creates 9 green and brown. Does all that damage with that chance of an extra turn. This is going to feed entirely back into this until it gets charged up. Any green overflow is going to feed up 
uh, Queen B. And we can then cast this again if we want to. If it is charged up and Queen B is ready to cast, we can just loop with her instead. You don't need to keep on casting Mystic Manuscript. The banner for this, I'm going to go for plus two blue, plus one green, minus one yellow. And the class as we showed was a Geomancer. I'll just show this uh, Mythic Alternative while I think about it. If you want to go with a Mythic Alternative, I think this is actually going to be enough for this, to be honest. It's going to be very, very good indeed. But you can go for a very, very loopy team with this, which is absolutely almost guaranteed to loop until the enemy is dead. It does require a mythic though. If you go Daughter of Time, who creates five Hourglass Gems, five Freeze Gems and gains an extra turn. Remember those Hourglass Gems, when you match yellow with an Hourglass, you get a guaranteed extra turn, even if frozen. You can then go Kronos, our mythic. Does damage to all enemies, converts blue to hourglass gems, so that's blue to yellow with the effect of hourglass gems, and also enchants all allies when I get, when I get an extra turn, as well as gain magic when an ally casts a spell. And if you combine that with, let's go to Queen, Queen Zochi, again, does damage to all enemies, and if there's a storm, explode five gems. If you do this in Stormcaller class, you're guaranteed that storm. It also creates an absolute ton of yellow. That combination with Kronos and Daughter of Time you're going to take out an hourglass gem and you're going to just get a really loopy team which you can just do that over and over. Really, really good. But let's just um, roll with this for now and then we'll show how we change it around when the towers start appearing. So let's jump into a, a battle or four. So we go, our Mystic Manuscript is up already. We can just um, cast this right away, just explode some gems. Due to the Potion of Enchantment, our... B is up next round anyway, and just uh, wipe everybody out in a single cast. Stick on Medals of Nysha for this if you want to get a nice boost up in power. If you want to get a mini head start in, in mana, you can go for two Nysha and one Medal of Arnu, which is what I've done for, for this team. So we're ready anyway. We don't know if we have to do anything. The combination of that Potion of Enchantment and the explosion at the beginning really, really gets the team ready in no time. Oh, oh, I thought I'd got rid of them. Oh, for, oh no. I, left, I left the window open in the bedroom. And now, just seeing a little scrawly, scrawly like thing crawling towards me on the floor. In fact, there's a few of them. Oh, God. I think the, I think the, I think the chipmunks have arrived. Scram! Get, get, get the fuck. Go! Oh, they're not listening. I think I've got rid of those pesky chipmunks once and for all. Now, this team will keep on working. It'll be absolutely fine, but you can actually change it around a bit if you want to have a little bit of fun. But um, one important thing to notice when you get to this kind of stage, when multiple towers start appearing, is how you can use Queen Bee in a slightly different way. Now, scatter damage is really good, but there's one a massive difference between this and damage to all, which a lot of people tend to miss. Like, damage to all is... It's most powerful when there's the most enemies on the screen. Like four enemies means you get damage to all. That combination of all that added, added up damage is going to be higher than if there's just one or two enemies left. Because obviously damage to all, you're only doing damage to literally one or two troops if, if that's all that's left. The opposite happens with scatter damage. Scatter damage starts off at its weakest when there's more enemies on the screen. Because the amount of scatter damage you do is divided up between all the remaining enemies. So four enemies there means you're doing less overall damage, but it gets really, really powerful when there's less enemies on the screen. As you get down to like two and one enemy, then they get the full power. They get the full compression of everything of that scatter damage onto them and it becomes mega powerful. This is where this team is really cool with a troop like this, where we can blast out one of those towers immediately, get them kabooshed out of there really quick. And then this is gonna increase the damage that Queen Bee does on the remaining troops. Um, but with three towers here, you can actually change it around a bit. I'll still leave it like this if you're a newer player. 
because it's nice to have that safety of that barrier whenever we collect a brown and you can just cast lady of ruin and get rid of those towers one at a time but for the sake of the video you can have a little bit of fun you can pop a lady of ruin to the top because remember she's the siege breaker as well if you have that trait if you don't have that trait then leave her, her at the bottom leave it as it was if you've got it you can have a bit of fun and pop her to the top and if you want even more fun regarding skulls you can bring in carmina i think as it is right now it will work really really well and be fairly safe but if you want to go a little bit berserk you can actually bring in carmina creates four skulls or four doom skulls and four uber doom skulls and the second part if an enemy is death marked create one more of each skull is not going to be relevant because even though you death mark an enemy when an enemy dies the towers are immune to death mark so it's not going to actually be relevant but we'll pop her in there and just uh, see how it goes just for fun Let's see what happens. Like I say, the other team with Mystic Manuscript at the top and Double Queen Bee should be absolutely fine. But um, what we got here? Not a lot by the look of it. The only color we don't use. Thank you very much, game. So kind. Right, let's cast our Mystic Manuscript. All right, we can do this straight away if we want, but want to get that top troop out of the way first. Oh, we've got a tower at the top now. This is... Prime Carmina territory. Let's go for it. There's them killed. Oh, someone else died already. And this is where the compressed power of the Queen Bee comes into play. Look, there's only two troops left. And they both got that scatter damage divided up onto both of them. This is more vulnerable than the other team I showed with Mystic Manuscript at the top because you're not getting that barrier every single time you get brown. Uh, but when this changes to three towers, it should be very, very good indeed. Right, let us get some red. So obviously when we cast this as well, we do actually create those those skulls at the same time. So let's concentrate on getting our... Uh, have we got any blue? No. Got any green? No. Game's being a bit mean on the colours. Uh, let's just do that. Right, let's soften them up with Queen Bee. All right, now let us... Uh, should we do this first? I want to get rid of that top troop ideally. I want to... See if I can get a nice cascade. Oh, there's quite a lot of skulls there. Let's go for it now. There you go. Quick damage. Quick. <laughs> That's what can happen. Well, there you go. There's the video. There's the teams. If you enjoyed the video, found it useful or helpful, be really cool if you bash that like and subscribe button. It really does help. But most of all, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you again next time. Bye for now. All of growth.